Hello everyone, welcome to Pale Blue Thoughts once again. Many thanks for your overwhelming response to our last few videos on COVID. I am glad that you all enjoyed them and appreciate your feedback. Today we will leave Corona and go back to discussing scientific topics again. Another critical aspect of our channel is that we are very close to touching 10,000 views and we hope to achieve it with this video. Many thanks for your continued patronage to our channel. Also, a significant development is that this channel will now be a one-man army as my partner has decided to quit owing to personal commitments due to which he was finding it difficult to contribute in a considerable manner towards the channel. I wish to thank the contributions towards Pale Blue Thoughts and wish him well. This, I assure you, in no way would affect the content as I would continue to release videos at the same rate as earlier. My commitment is towards my passion and the Constitution of India which urges me to spread scientific temper, the spirit of inquiry and reform. Today's topic is something which is on the mind of millions of people across the world. The question being, which is better, natural or chemicals? We see now that the best marketing technique for any product to sell good is to label it as organic or natural. This question earned much attention during the ongoing pandemic as many people resorted to so-called natural remedies instead of scientifically proven methods claiming that because some things are natural, it would be less harmful or it would be more beneficial. Today, we will look at this in detail. The basis of this divide stems from an unwanted fear that is present in our minds called as chemophobia. In our society, chemophobia is very common and unfortunately very popular. The word chemical has unfairly negative connotations and has become a dirty word despite the fact that everything we see, smell and touch are chemicals. Let us understand what is chemophobia first. Chemophobia is an aversion to chemicals. The phenomenon has been attributed to cause a concern over the potential adverse effects of synthetic chemicals and to an irrational fear of these substances because of misconceptions about their potential for harm particularly the possibility of certain exposures to some synthetic chemicals elevating an individual's risk of cancer. Consumer products with labels such as natural and chemical free appeal to chemophobic sentiments by offering consumers what appears to be a safer alternative. Two points that can be used to describe chemophobia. One, an irrational fear of compounds perceived as synthetic and two, undue love for anything natural. Now here is the problem with this. Can you name anything in this world which is not a chemical? The air, the water, the soil, food, medicines, everything that is available in plants, animals and ourselves are built from chemicals. Every substance in the universe is a chemical. However, people have this notion of chemicals being bad because they don't notice that everything is a chemical. It's like color blindness. The color is there, but a color blinded person just can't see the color. There are many reasons why people turn into chemophobics. This basically works on a rhetorical tactic called appeal to nature, which is that a thing is good because it is natural or bad because it is unnatural. Now let us take sucrose for example. It is available in many plants naturally in the form of C12, S22, O11. Now we can synthesize the same inside our labs and the chemical formula remains C12, H22, O11. Exactly the same. There is no difference. Yet people perceive both the sucrose differently. However, most of us know it by its household name, table sugar. Take any similar naturally occurring substances. Salt is NaCl, water is H2O, citric acid commonly found in lemons is C6H8O7. Yet these don't appear to be chemicals in the eyes of chemophobic. Let us take one more example. 
You all know this as a banana. Now the striking ingredients label for a banana was created by a high school chemistry teacher as part of a lesson on chemophobia. Imagine if this was written on every banana, would anyone eat it? One of the most famous fruits which is said to have made a significant contribution to science and one which hates doctors, the common apple has over 300 chemical compounds inside it including calcium, magnesium, sulfur, phosphorus and chlorine. Yet an apple doesn't invoke that much fear than say a fertilizer that contains almost the same elements. We fear the fertilizer and make conspiracy theories in favor of organic farming and make the same apple and consume it without fear. We already spoke about something called as lethal dose or LD50 when we spoke about snake venoms in a previous video. The LD50 is one way to measure the short term poisoning potential or acute toxicity of a material. We will mention the same here because the harmless looking fruits and vegetables contain harmful chemicals such as apple seeds contain amygdalin, pears contain formaldehyde, potatoes contain solanin, all of which are toxic to humans if consumed above their LD50 values. Most of these chemicals are the defenses plants have taken to protect itself from potential attackers. Yes, they are a byproduct of evolution. Plants can't run and hide like animals, so they have evolved to produce these harmful chemicals in order to fight its predators and keep its species alive. Hence, when we say all natural things are safe and best for health, we are absolutely wrong. Another example is aflatoxins, which are present naturally in our world. Aflatoxins are poisonous carcinogens that are produced by certain fungus which grow in soil, decaying vegetation, hay and grains. They are regularly found in improperly stored staple commodities such as tapioca, chili peppers, millet, peanuts, rice, sesame seeds, sweet corn, wheat and a variety of spices. When contaminated food is processed, aflatoxins enter the general food supply where they have been found in both pet and human foods as well as in feedstocks for agricultural animals. It is always the dose that makes the poison. Just because a chemical is present, it does not mean that it is harmful in the amount present. All of the food items that I mentioned earlier contain natural chemicals that are toxic to humans. However, they are usually present in very small amounts, far below the harmful dose. Another hot news which our media spread is that the increased cancer patients in our country is due to the immense use of insecticides. Not because of increased use of alcohol or tobacco, but pesticides. Let us analyze. One of the most trusted and reliable agency and website is the International Agency for Research on Cancer. This is an intergovernmental agency forming part of the World Health Organization. Its role is to conduct and coordinate research into the causes of cancer. It also collects and publishes surveillance data regarding the occurrence of cancer worldwide. The IARC classifies substances to show whether they are suspected to cause cancer or not. It places substances in one of the five categories depending on the strength of evidence for their carcinogenicity. Group 1 is the highest in this regard. The placement of a substance into this classification means that there is sufficient evidence in humans for it causing cancer. So if you were to take the top 10 items that cause cancer, not a single pesticide get featured here. Instead, alcohol, tobacco, betel leaves, arecanut, chimney soot, sunlight, processed meat, viruses and bacteria feature in that list. Even if we take the top 20, there are no pesticides. Take the top 50 and you get to see one, linden, which is already a banned substance and not used anymore in the pesticide industry. Yet, we don't feel any aversion towards the items in the top categories but label pesticides and insecticides as cancer-causing agents. Most of the pesticides that we use come under group 3 which is marked as carcinogenically not classifiable. 
This means that there is inadequate evidence in both humans and animals that these items cause cancer. Now look at the other items in this category. T, static magnetic field, fluorescent lighting, polythene, etc. You don't feel anything about switching on the fluorescent lighting in your room to enjoy a cup of tea in the morning. But insecticides are a no-no. DDT, once used regularly against ants, is in group 2B listed as possibly carcinogenic to humans. It sits with other common chemicals such as coffee, exhaust fumes, petrol, welding fumes and pickled vegetables. So to sum up, it is time we shed this affection towards natural and herbal and stick to what is accepted as science. This problem exists in many so-called herbal remedies. No research is done by the naturopaths to determine what are the chemical compositions in the leaves that they give to their patients. Many plants contain toxic alkaloids which cause severe complications to our kidneys and liver. I am not saying that all such systems of medicines are pseudoscience. What is required is that more studies are needed before we can ascertain that they are good for health. Classification of the ingredients is an important step towards demonstrating their health benefits. For example, take a strip of regular paracetamol and you can see all the active ingredients listed there. Also, their chemical composition and physiological actions are detailed in manuals. But take any old manuscript which supposedly explains the beneficial properties of the so-called natural or herbal medicines. Do you see any such system of classification and detail mention of their physiological actions? No, you won't. Hence, these would come under the label of protoscience. And until science or the problems themselves conduct tests and prove their efficacy over randomized controlled trials, that is where it would stay. So my parting words on the subject is, please don't fall for this appeal to nature and conclude that a thing is good because it is natural or bad because it is unnatural. Everything including me and you and everything surrounding us are chemicals and we live while interacting with chemicals every single second. Science will not prescribe you something that would kill you. Instead, the efforts will always be to sustain your life. So break free from the chemical chain and start to live life the scientific way. I will be back soon with yet another interesting episode. Until then, stay home, stay safe and it's bye bye from Pale Blue Thoughts.